questions for Coach Mazzoni. Start right up front with Sam. Sam always has a question. <laughs> <laughs> you love me though, right? Yeah. Um, where in your from where you want it to be? Where is Trevor's Trevor's overall level of play? Um, I don't know. I mean, every I think I'm, every every week he gets a little bit better. So that some skill sets to play. Like I said a, a while back, he's obviously a, a really good athlete. Gift. He's got a lot of skills, and I think what Trevor is working hard to be is to be a quarterback that's athletic and not just an athlete that happens to play quarterback. And I think every week you see a little bit more. He's feeling more comfortable. You know, he's finally starting to get some games under his belt. The best, the best coach in the world is is reps, is playing in games. You can coach them all you want and be out there 80 hours a day working on stuff, but it's not not you can't replicate being in a football game, being in the situations, um, you know, against real live um, bad guys, you know. So I'm I'm really happy with how he's been progressing. Right side, middle, Ben. You know, coach, with uh, Trevor's got a fairly low completion percentage. Um, you know, one of the lowest in the conference, yet he still managed to find a way to, to be an um, adept quarterback. Why has he been able to do that? We're, we're kind of in that we're kind of in that quality, not quantity completions. We're we're I mean we we're throwing the ball more downfield. Obviously your percentages go down the further the ball gets thrown down the field. And so we're throwing the ball down the field probably more than I ever have in this offense. Because um, we got some real guys outside, and he's comfortable with it, and our running games, um, our running games going good. Yeah, would I like his percentage realistically? I feel right, Trevor. For him, his completion percentage ought to be somewhere between 63 and 68. Um, so uh, that's another. That's just an area that we just keep on working on. Right up front, Brent. Curious if you've ever had a conversation with Trevor about the uh, 2014 Sugar Bowl, Oklahoma versus Alabama, in which he was the MVP. And is that something you might watch in terms of scheme wise, what Oklahoma did that day? No. Have you ever talked to him about it? Won't have the conversation, won't look at the film, won't, I don't care. Why, why is that? Because, uh, you know, what I'm going to watch is I'm going to watch Alabama, you know, what I'm going to watch is I'm going to watch what Alabama's done this, this year and probably step back and watch some stuff they did last year. Um, and what we do offensively is what we do. So I don't want, you know, sometimes like, like, like less is more type thinking, right? Um, you know, and especially when you have a bye week. Uh, right now, I think he feels comfortable with what what we're doing, and so I don't want to throw a bunch of stuff in there that uh, this that's not who we are. So is that I don't want I don't want to say I use somebody else's plays. Come on. <laughs> I was going to say, so it doesn't matter that he was the quarterback in that <laughs> no, video. Okay. No. That was what, two years ago? Yes. Coming upon three that. years ago? Well, it's two. Almost three. Yeah, almost, no, almost three years ago. Yeah. yeah Stay nah, wouldn't do anything. Yeah. Stay on the right side, Olin. Yeah, Noel. Um, you know, Trevor, we, we've watched so many big plays he, he's made uh, in the running game and things like that. But I, I'm curious, uh, as you're watching, do you feel like that? The majority of the time that he's making the right read uh, on the zone read, are there times when you feel like, as you're watching it, that that he should have given up or keep it? Anyway, in your feeling, uh, in your I guess appraisal, how often do you feel like that he's making the right read? I mean, are you really comfortable and, and satisfied with what he's <laughs> doing there? Yeah, totally. It's a hard it's a hard thing to do. You know, I tell you what, like I said last week. Sunday when I'm watching the film, I make the right read every time, you know, and uh, but it, he's making um, and I think we talked about this before he's making in this style of offense. He's making post game snap the post snap uh, quick decisions. I mean split decisions on can I take a give can I throw it outside what's the leverage of this guy those type of things and then at the snap of the ball um, and then if, and then one thing you don't think about if that snap just happens to take his eyes away from where they need to be for a second. All right, now all of a sudden, you know, as soon as you look away, when you look back, nothing's going to be where it was. It's all going to be someplace different. And now you're making a decision on some very, very athletic defensive ends in this league. I mean, number nine, Barnett, I mean, that guy's real. 
um, you know, very athletic guys. And so, yeah, I never, one thing I, I try not to do, right, is I never, I never second guess any of his decisions during the football game. Now, we'll go back and watch the film the next day and he'll study it and say, hey, look, at he squeeze, you know, he's pinning the hip a little bit more here, or he's not, or this guy's slow playing here, or, you know, I think I can pull it. But during the game, no, I never want him to hesitate on his decision because he's got to make the decision and live with it. Right side aisle, Gabe. No, if you could speak to Jim Turner's impact already in this with you guys meshing together, and, and how involved is he in the run, uh, in the run game during the games? Totally involved with the run game. In fact, I, th I, I he's been, um, he's been, and I'm not going to say this because then he'll get like he'll start yelling at me because I said nice stuff about him. All right, you know he's an Irish kid from the North End of Boston, so what do you expect, right? <laughs> Um, you know, his, his favorite people in the world are Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, <laughs> you know? So, um, but I do love him because he's got a Larry Bird jersey hanging up in his, and that's my guy, the legend. He's got him hang, his jersey hanging up in his office. Um, no, probably, I mean, it all go, all I do is just call some plays, you know? I mean, he's, he is unbelievable during the game, during the week of practice, the whole thing about, about, and probably the thing I've noticed probably more so than than most guys I've been around is his in game his in game adjustments to what's happening out there and even the even how our our guys are playing and what the fronts are doing and the game and what runs we should be and how we're going to attack all that kind of stuff all right he has been awesome with that makes some really he he makes some really great halftime adjustments um, you know uh, from what we're seeing so yeah he's been and he's a lot of fun to be around. He's he's a yeah, he's a good, very good coach. On the right side in the middle, Ben. You know, coach, when, we're, when I was talking about I kind of want to clarify what I was talking about earlier. You know, Knight's completion percentage has been kind of what it's always been, and yet here he seemed to really flourish. Why is that? His completion percentage has been what it's always been, but here it's he's flourishing. Well, then that's what he is. He's a 53 guy. Well, why, is, well, why has he been so successful here? Because y'all are 6-0 and the offense is moving pretty well. Um, um, maybe it's, maybe it's those, those um, 5.3 completions out of ten, every 10 attempts have been like really good completions. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. I haven't really studied that. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I mean, I, mean I, I would not know that. I would not have a intelligent well I never have an intelligent answer but that one I would definitely never have an intelligent answer for you know I think his completion percentage be higher he wants it to be higher I think it should be uh, we need to keep working for it to be a little bit higher I think that's too low for him um, the reason there's all there's all kinds of factors in that I'd have to go back and we'd have to pull out every incompletion and look at the reasons why um, but I think he uh, he is getting you know I like how he's improving as, as his play in the pocket Right up front, Sam, and we'll go to the back. Aside from uh, that force fumble on Travion the last right right before the end zone in the fourth quarter, what could you guys have done better late to close this game Third out? Third down. Opinion? Third and short man, killed us. I was really disappointed in that. And it was and it was just uh, it wasn't anything they did, it's what we did. You know, it's not like, oh no, they got that. They ran that front, and we had this play, and that's not going to work. It was just, it was just fundamentally and technique-wise of how of 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 the, the play that they should have been. I mean, two of those drives. I mean, that that was kind of the one thing that right now that that is con it's not concerning, but something that that we talk about to the to the play that we talk about on offense and to the players who realize this is every game we had that little lull. All right, and, we're, and, we, and we need to be more consistent. Um, yeah, you're going to go three and outs sometimes. I mean, it's life, all right? Oh my gosh, I've had a life full of three and outs, right? Um, and that's going to happen. But we hit that time. With something, you know, it seems like we hit that one period where we go like a couple, two or three in a row. And, and usually it's just execution like most plays. Um, so that would probably be the thing that, that after I looked at the game that we had our opportunities there in the shoot, even in the third quarter especially in the fourth quarter, um, that we could have, you know, stayed on the field and helped our defense out a little bit, you know, kept them and kept them off the field. 
instead of going a couple three and outs right there. But then the kids did come back, and I think in our last five possessions, we went and created points in our last five possessions, which was cool. Standing in the back, Daryl. Not to take anything away from the Tennessee guys' play on Travion when he knocks the ball out of the end yeah, zone. Was, that was a great play, wasn't it? But how do you, how do you avoid that from happening in the future? Well, he's or a, is there a way to do that? Yeah, he's a freshman, so he hasn't learned it yet. But when you break away, your first thing you do is you look at the diamond vision. All right, serious, okay? Because then you tell if somebody's chasing you or not, and. Uh, you know, he said he felt that the guy that did it was being blocked by Speedy. So once he passed him, he kind of forgot about him because Speedy had him pretty well hemmed up. And uh, and then when he when he ran by the safety, he he didn't he he thought well, shoot there's nobody there wasn't anybody left because he'd gone through the last level of the defense. And that and the player is number 23 or 13, 20, 13. I mean, he got off of Speedy's block and he did he made a heck of a play. Um, uh, unbelievable play to come back and get him. And then the other thing is, is no matter how tired you are, you always got to keep the ball high and tight. So, you know, just things like that. But, no, it was a great play by their defense. All right. Thanks for the time.